there, um, the seeds, I come back here about five or six times. Crazy, huh? I'm telling you, this is the slums, baby. This is the slums. Real blue collar place, not much industry at all. There's one furniture factory and that's, you know, about 2,000 people from the town work there. We don't have a lot of money school district wise. So socioeconomics here are really low. Everybody works and it's just one of those places is just was real blue collar. Say, come on, come on. Look at this big girl. Whip me a shot. How you doing, Keely? You look like you, looking better than ever. Thank you. This right here is the locker room. This used to be my locker right here. Matter of fact, we helped build this locker room. Your senior year? My senior year summer, uh, me and him used to come in every day and build it, the floors, the lockers. We painted the lockers and all this. We had to take the paintbrush away from it. This is the weight room. They didn't kind of upgrade it since I left. Honestly, I didn't even lift weights in high school. That wasn't my cup of tea. Nobody. Nobody. This wasn't my part of the field. This is where we spent our time. This is behind the scenes. This is, bro, where's the lights? Y'all done upgraded so much? This is our training table right here. Y'all gotta understand we're not 5 or 6 a. We just got sponsored by Adidas. These guys are big time in there. You see what they sponsored by Adidas? Back here when I was going to school a couple years ago, we were just wearing anything, Nike. I stole so many pair of these, bro. I, I used to wear them like draws. <laughs> this is, uh, this is towel office. That's when I first got recruited right here. The next step, five star D line. Um, after that game, they made me a five star. What's it like growing up here? About how you see it. Rough, rough. Honestly, uh, I think my grandmother still have a couch. I slept on a couch like this, uh, just like this, and my legs used to hang off. No, this couch is too much comfortable. The, then the couch I step on. The couch I step on, it was like, the seats were, uh, it's probably stopped right here. And my legs used to hang off the couch like this. I did this my whole freaking junior year. A whole year I step on the couch at my grandmother's house. This, this is Church Street right here, man. From that house right there to all this area. This is Church Street. This is my grandmama's house, this is where I grew up. That was me in high school, my grandmother held it up. This is it, man. Mama, who you cooking for? For the church tomorrow. Hey, babe. I've been had a full house ever since I've been over in Houston. Mm -hmm. Just taking care of one after another. So, it was like my grandmother had a room, my auntie had a room, my parents had a room. And then they leave me without. It used to be one couch right there, a smaller couch, and a longer couch right there. Like we had like 11 people in this house. Three, four, five. Yeah, we had like 11, 12. Sometimes like 15 with other family come down. My dad had, um, had went to prison when I was like in the fourth grade. And my mom, she was like supporting three kids. We had to wait at 7 o'clock till my mom get off from two below to Nettleton. We still went to Nettleton school. That's like a 45 minute drive. So our mama get there at like 8. We'll drive from Nettleton, come all the way to Houston, and we'll stay at my grandmother's house. This went on for like two or, two or three years. My senior year, that's when I moved in with my dad. So I stopped playing football. And I thought I was going to be a basketball star. After I take it to my house, you're going to see the court behind it. That's where we live and die by. I'll be out there playing basketball now. This is legendary. Tell you, you thought you were Paul Pierce. You you yeah, I was Paul Pierce. We um, we spray painted a three-point line, free throw line. Like it was just our way of getting getting away from everything. No, I was the first person to ever dunk on these guys. Right, right but we had we had um, we had Greg Pulliam. He was the he was the stud of basketball. He used to be the king of the court until I came on. You know, <laughs> you know that. You know that. My dad, he always been supportive. Me and my dad are like this. I'm gonna let you break them. Okay. Revolutionware.com. Give me some, give me some. I'm his father, y'all know that? Yeah. I, I look younger to you though, look, you know what I'm He just be going with the flow. If I tell my dad I wanna go to Alaska, man, he'll be like, I'll ride with you, but I don't know why you wanna go. Hey, 
<laughs> ain't nothing to do in Alaska. But he's pretty supportive though, man. He always told me it, it all could be worse. So you just be excited about where you at. We was at the draft and Chris didn't go that first round. Everybody was scared. I got up, I said, look, I don't know what's on y'all mind, but everybody get up. You're gonna get drafted today. The Kansas City Chiefs select Chris Jones, defensive tackle. That's the way I raised my kids. That's the way my mother raised me. To keep a positive mind on every outcome. My first year to start coaching football, I'll never coach a, another player like that again. Like you see every day, he is who he is. That's how he was here, um, and everybody liked him. I like to create happiness. I feel like that's my uh, that's my cause on this world. I give people that buzz of happiness, man. I bring out the happy in people through through their works. That's what I feel like my cause on this earth is. You know, there's so much more pride now compared to what it was. Um, you can't say, you know, there's not a person from Houston that's never ever done anything, and so. It just shows that you can still, it don't matter where you are. I mean, you can still be a dime and you can still be great. I, I like the struggles. I like going through the struggles, man, because I get to reflect on back where I came from. After you see the houses that I grew up in and the hardships I faced, it kind of makes me even more excited where I am today. I don't think if I didn't come from here, I wouldn't have my attitude. If I would gave a silver spoon, I'd probably be different. So it's just a small town, it like forms you. That's why you have a lot of people like, they grow up and they never want to leave Houston. They kind of want to stay here. And I always just thought bigger.